hundreds of, of engineering hours that went behind this and the records of those designs. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Universal Narratives, a channel dedicated to unraveling the mysteries of the cosmos. Today, we delve into a tragic event that captured the attention of the entire world. As we explore the depths of this incident, we come face to face with the profound implications it holds for safety regulations, technological innovation, and the delicate balance between exploration and adherence to industry standards in the realm of commercial submersibles. The entire world watched with bated breath as a stopwatch was placed over the impending deaths of five passengers aboard the Ocean Gate submarine. This vessel, designed for deep sea exploration, tragically became lost in the vast and treacherous depths of the ocean. The submersible, equipped with only 96 hours of oxygen supply, embarked on an expedition that would test the boundaries of human endurance. News channels and social media pages were abuzz with a live countdown known as the Wishful 96 Hours, amplifying the anticipation and hope for a successful rescue mission. However, as the clock hit zero, all rescue missions came to a halt, and Ocean Gate Expeditions, the company behind the ill-fated voyage, delivered the devastating news of the deaths of all five passengers, including the company's CEO, Stockton Rush. Upon reflection, it becomes apparent that the entire rescue mission was a race against time, plagued by numerous challenges and issues that emerged from the very beginning. Reports indicate that the submarine was ill-equipped to handle the harsh conditions encountered, and safety protocols were blatantly disregarded. This disregard for safety, coupled with the subpar conditions of the vessel, sealed its fate before it even embarked on its ill-fated expedition. The conditions surrounding the rescue mission were exceptionally demanding. Rescuers were acutely aware of the limited oxygen supply aboard the submarine, raising concerns that it would deplete before the designated 96-hour time frame. News reports tirelessly highlighted the race against time, with the rescue teams having the same number of hours to locate the missing submarine. However, experts with knowledge of submarine and Titanic expeditions estimated that the rescuers had only approximately 76 hours to locate the Ocean Gate vessel. Even within this limited time frame, the odds of finding the passengers alive were dishearteningly slim. The tragic reality was that the passengers, trapped inside the submarine, had no means of escape. While it is true that any human attempting to swim four kilometers below the ocean's surface would succumb to the crushing pressures, one would assume that the instinct for survival would drive them to fight against all odds. However, the passengers were trapped inside the submarine, where the only means of opening the gate was from the outside. This dire circumstance rendered any rescue attempts futile. The depth of the ocean posed additional challenges for potential rescue operations. The submarine, if located on the ocean bed with the passengers still alive, would be firmly stuck in the muddy oceanic floor, making it immovable and inaccessible. In such a scenario, the U.S. Coast Guard, renowned for their rescue capabilities, would be rendered powerless. Tim Moulton, an expert on the Titanic sinking and wreckage, expressed little optimism regarding the rescue missions, drawing from his insights into the location of the Titanic wreckage. Moulton suggested that the poor design of the submarine and the immense oceanic pressure would likely result in the vessel being breached, allowing water to seep inside. Exploring the depths of the ocean is a daunting task. It's pitch black, freezing cold, with an undulating sievet that obscures visibility. Finding the submarine in this vast expanse was akin to finding a needle in a haystack. To exacerbate matters, Submersibles lacked the capability to tow the missing submarine to the surface, making a successful rescue operation technologically impossible. These revelations shed light on Ocean Gate's questionable practices and decisions. Before the tragedy unfolded, Ocean Gate had faced allegations of neglecting proper safety protocols and disregarding thorough testing. External reviewers, as well as the company's own employees and engineers, expressed doubts about the submarine's ability to withstand the immense pressure of the ocean depths. Concerns were raised about every aspect, from the construction materials to the emergency exit mechanism of the submarine, which were deemed suspicious and unreliable. Despite these warning signs, the company pressed on with its operations, seemingly driven by the ambitions of its executive officer and founder, Stockton Rush. 
In a recent uncovering by the New York Times, a 2018 letter written by industry experts highlighted major concerns surrounding the Titan submersible and its planned expeditions to the Titanic wreckage. The Marine Technology Society, a group of ocean engineers, technologists, policymakers, and educators, criticized OceanGate for its experimental approach and lack of independent assessment from industry regulators. Questions were raised about whether the Titan should have undergone evaluation by industry assessors or risk regulators. The dissatisfaction expressed by the Marine Technology Society stemmed from OceanGate's claims that the Titan design would meet or surpass safety standards established by DNVGL, a highly regarded classification society for the maritime industry. However, it became apparent that OceanGate had no intention of subjecting the vessel to assessment by the same organization, a surprising twist that raised concerns about transparency and accountability. Certification processes typically involve comprehensive inspections during construction and operations to ensure compliance with internationally recognized rules. OceanGate later justified their decision not to pursue certification by arguing that while certification ensures adherence to standards, it fails to address the primary cause of accidents, human error. They also expressed concerns that the certification process could stifle innovation and impede progress. The saga surrounding OceanGate's safety protocols and the tragic events that unfolded raises significant questions about the balance between technological advancement, safety regulations, and the ethical responsibilities of those involved in the field of deep sea exploration. The revelations expose a web of intrigue and invite scrutiny into the actions and decisions made by OceanGate, leaving us with a profound sense of unease and the need for further investigation. As we conclude this exploration of the incident, we are left with a somber realization. OceanGate, driven by its ambition and perhaps disregarding the warnings and recommendations from experts, sent its passengers into the depths of the ocean with little regard for their safety. The tragedy serves as a stark reminder that the ocean is a formidable force, unforgiving to those who underestimate its power. It prompts us to reevaluate the delicate balance between technological progress, safety protocols, and ethical responsibilities in the realm of deep sea exploration. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey. If you enjoyed the content and want to stay connected, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Your support means the world to us and we can't wait to bring you more exciting videos. Join our growing community today and be a part of the adventure.